All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make an infinite vertical scrolling marquee. And there's two examples here. One is where I have the music artist and then the song title. And if the song title is too long, I do have it cut off. But this thing scrolls infinitely vertically. As you can see, we have the same two pieces of text and it appears to be scrolling infinitely in the upward direction. There's a little trick to get this to work, but this can be applied to other things as well, especially things with one line of text. For example, if you look at this one here, I have the time, the day of the week, and today's date. And as you notice, everything's scrolling vertically. So it's like an infinite loop that it's going through this. And there's a trick to get this to work, like I said, but it works the same way for both of these animations. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this tutorial. So let's get started. So let's start with a blank preset in KOWP. And the first thing we're gonna create, or the one I'm gonna show you in this tutorial is the one with the artist name. And then on the second line, it's gonna be the song title. So we're gonna add this stuff inside of a stat group. Inside of this stack group, let's go ahead and set this layer, the stacking to vertical center. That's gonna center the artist name with the song title. And back inside of this stack group, let's go ahead and add some text and let's add the artist name. Let's go ahead and give it a little bit of size. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna make this rather large. That way you can see it. Obviously, you're probably gonna make it a little bit smaller, especially when you're going to need to cut the text for some of the longer song titles, or maybe even the artist name. I'm gonna take this artist name, I'm going to copy and paste it. And since this is vertically stacking, uh, it should be centered. Obviously it is here because it's the same two words, but if we come in here and change this to the title, this song title is quite long. So it's going to be off the screen because I have such a large font size. Well, what can we do to fix this? Since my font is so big, we can do a text converter. I'm gonna do ELL. That's gonna put the three dots after a certain number of characters. You will probably want to use more characters than what I'm using here, but I'm just gonna do six. So it's gonna show the first six characters, one, two, three, four, the space counts as five, and then that capital I counts as six, and then it's gonna show those three dots. That's what the text converter ELL does. Like I said, you probably wanna do more than just six, and your font size is probably gonna be smaller. Let's go back and apply this to the artist name just in case we have a long artist name as well. So this artist incubus is getting cut off because it's only showing the first six characters followed by three dots. Now, the trick to get this to work is whatever item we're showing first, we actually want to copy and paste that into this stack group so that we have it down here. Now, this is gonna make more sense as we progress through the tutorial. So let's back out of this for right now. Let's go ahead and create a border in the, I'm gonna do it in the center of the screen. I'll add a shape, make it a rectangle. I'm gonna give it enough width so that I can show my information. Give it some height so that we can see one word. So probably somewhere around here, the word incubus is getting blocked and I'm going to position this in the center of the screen for the sake of this tutorial. Go to the paint for that rectangle, set it to stroke, and I have my stroke set to 10. I'm gonna go back to this. I'm gonna add a little bit of corner to it. And now what we want to do is we're going to position this stack group down here. What I recommend doing is going to the stack group I'm gonna go to position, I'm not going to center it, I'm just gonna take this Y offset and I'm going to adjust it until that first line, the first time we see Incubus is pretty much in the center of that rectangle. That right there is good for me. Now, in the event that you have, uh, you can adjust the border to make it taller or shorter, or if you have, you know, maybe this word is showing some inside of here, you can always go to the layer of your stat group and you can increase the margins as well to uh, keep those separated so that you're only seeing one line of text, in this case, the artist title, and I'm not seeing any of this peeking through that border. We have not applied a clip to this yet, but now I wanna talk about the animations. So here's what we want to happen, eventually, all of this stuff is gonna be clipped and it's, we're only going to see what's inside of this rectangle. So I want this uh, artist name to go up to show this inside of here. And then I want it to go up again to show this inside of here. But what's gonna happen, the trick we're going to do is that when this part here is up here, we're actually going to loop back and it's gonna show this piece again. 
you're not going to see that transition happen. And if you set up your complex animation correctly, it's going to look like an infinite loop that's going up. This would work the same going down, but obviously you'd want to put this here and keep the rest of your stuff above. So let's work on that. Let's go to animation for this stat group. You're going to have to play around with the percentages, but we're going to react on a loop, not a loop with return, just a loop. Let's set it to complex animation. Let's set our ease to straight. That works best here. And you can add a number global for your duration. I'm just going to set this to four seconds. And before we go into our animator, let's talk about how many animations we're really going to have. This is showing, this is going to slide up. So that's one animation. Now when that slides up, we want this to be in the center of this box. Well, once that's done, this song title, we want it to slide up again. So we're going to have two animations. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. I want 50% of my animation to occur when I'm sliding from here to here. That's going up again. And then I want the other 50% of my animation to occur when I'm going to this one. But since we have it set to loop, it's going to bounce right back to this one. That probably doesn't make much sense, but let's go ahead and fine tune this. So inside of our animator, let's say for the first 30% of my animation, all I want to do is see that first line of text. I want to see the artist name for the first 30% of my animation. So at 30%, I'm going to set the Y offset to zero. I do not want it to move. Now, for the next 20%, that's going to take me to 50%. I'm going to take a guess on my Y offset, and to move it up, I'm going to do a negative number. Let's start with negative 100. We have to come back and fine tune this. This is how you get the effect to look nice. So what's really happening here for the first 30%, we see the artist name. For the next 20%, it's going to slide up and we're going to see the song title. Now, I want that song title to stay still for a little while. Why not let it stay still for the same duration that we had the artist name staying still? Remember, this was staying still for the first 30%. So if we add 30% to 50%, we get 80%. So what do we want to happen at 80%? We want it to be still up until that point. So I'm not changing my Y offset. This is going to make the second line of text, our song title, remain still for 30% of our animation. Then for the last 20%, which takes us to 100%, I want to move up again, and we want to double whatever this Y offset was. In this case, I'm going to test out 200 and see if this works. And then since we have this thing set to loop, what's actually going to happen is once it hits 100%, it's going to loop back and it's going to take that first line of text, which was the artist in this example, and it's going to show it. The key here is to get these offsets correct so that the top artist name and the bottom artist name line up perfectly. And that's what's going to create this smooth transition that you're not even going to be able to see. Let's test this out. So I can already tell you, I'm going to have to adjust my Y offset some more. We have to move this thing up more because I want this artist, or excuse me, I want the song title to be in the center right now, and it's definitely not. So let's go back into our animator. Let's fine tune this one and this one to match. And whatever these two are, let's make sure we double it for this one right here. So notice what I've done. I'm testing it out, uh, moving it up a little bit higher. I want it to stay still, and then I want it to move up that same amount again. So we are doubling these numbers to get this last spot here. Let's test this out. That's too much. All right, so we got to fine tune this, and I'm going to play around with this, and I'll be right back in a second to show you what number I had to use. So this appears to work pretty well right here. This still does not look right in your eyes, I'm sure, but... When we go and apply a mask, we're not going to see that transition right there, that quick jump back. It's all going to look smooth. The numbers that I had to use for this complex animation to get this to work was negative 135. So, you know, it's staying still here. And then I doubled this number to get that one. And then again, when it hits that, it's going to jump from that bottom row of text back to the top instantly. And we're not going to see that transition once we apply the mask. You're going to have to play around with those numbers, no doubt about it. But now let's apply our mask to see this effect take full swing. So I'm going to take that border that I have. I'm going to copy and paste it. And this is going to be my clip. So we're going to clip this stack group with those three rows of text. 
I'm going to go to this clip and I'm going to set it back to a fill. Now, obviously this is hiding the text now, but whatever's inside of this rectangle that we're getting ready to apply that mask, that clip next module, it's only going to show whatever's inside of this white rectangle. So if I go over to FX for this clip, I go to mask, I go to clip next module, and now it's only going to show whatever's inside of here. It's important to bear in mind that you want to put whatever you're trying to clip, layer it above this one. That's how we get that effect. So now let's save this and let's look at it on the full screen. And what you're gonna see here is that it appears, you know, that jump, we don't see that jump. You will have to adjust that Y offset to get that top one and that bottom one to line up perfectly. That way you won't see a sudden jolt or jump. But as you can see here with that masking applied to it, it just looks like it's scrolling infinitely in the vertical direction. And there you have it. That's a vertical infinite scroll marquee. Again, you can apply this to more than just the artist name and the song title as I showed you back at the beginning. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.